All right, Coach Fry, two weeks into the outdoor season, and, of course, that means that uh, the Weems Baskin Invitational is in the rearview mirror for you guys. I know it's the biggest one yet, over 50 teams, over 1,500 athletes. That's always, I know, one of your favorite weeks of the year to reconnect with some old friends in coaching, to put on uh, one of the biggest two-day meets in all of college track and field. Uh, uh, really is uh, quite the spectacle to, to have that many folks, and Kroger Track's a fantastic place to have a meet like that. Well, you know, this past weekend, Crager was awesome. You know, it did have a big, it had a big time flavor. And we're excited about bringing that kind of thing. You know, in the history of, of Carolina, they had what they had, Carolina Record Relays. And that used to be, the, there was like a, a trail of things that went, Carolina Record Relays, then the Florida Relays. And then it was the Georgia Tech had a, a relay beat. So this goes all the way back in the 50s, and that's the circuit that they traveled. Uh, uh, and everybody has those dates, and they continue those dates. And it's kind of tradition in the South that people who don't travel big, that don't, that don't go out to Texas or go to California, they, they do the Florida relays, they do the Carolina Records, and now, which is Weems Baskin, and we've got it back to the level with our facilities <coughs> that that coming here seems to be the place to be. Raleigh Relays is north of here, and that's a big meet uh, uh, versus uh, the meet here in Florida. Our meet is versus Florida State Relays, so you got Carolina Relays, Florida State Relays. So it, it gives the colleges places to pick in the south as the winter weather changes, and so we got great, great number and great performances. Uh, two performances in particular really stood out on the men's side for you guys this past weekend. Uh, Jan just continues to get better and better every time he jumps the long jump, 25, nine and a half, I think. So he's up to, I think, five or six in the nation right now. Still early, but a, a big PR for him. And then Eric Favors with a, uh, I believe, a six inch PR in the shot put, 61, five and a half. He's in the top five or six nationally as well. Uh, both of those are guys that made it to regionals last year, didn't make the cut to Eugene, but they're showing the kind of form early in the season that they could really be in the mix for nationals. You know, going to the nationals, the first rounds, is, a, is difficult. It's almost like a, a process to the, to the finals, and uh, you have to go through it. Very few people go through their first times being at, at, a, at what's called the regionals and go from the regionals to the nationals. You know, and, uh, and then it's very few that go to the nationals and the first time become a scorer. So it's uh, so we're glad to see Eric, you know, getting to that point where now he's a contender to be a uh, a person that goes from the regional to the finals in Oregon because he's just a, a, a less than a meter away from uh, being able to do it. So when he puts these uh, meets together and is progressing, then uh, making the finals in the conference and and making the uh, top twelve in our region. Uh, out of 48, that's what you know. He, he he's already in the top 48. So this next step is to continue to be there, then get him in the top 12, make him top 24 in the country, gives him a shot to get to be an All American. Uh, on the women's side, Aaliyah Abrams was part of three victories, two relays, one individually in the 400. Seems like she's in pretty good form after taking a, a red shirt year. Uh, last year and you know you had success in the 100 hurdles with Caitlin Little you had a, a fantastic pole vault with Haley Sweatman hitting a new PR and, and moving up high on the national leaderboard so even though you might not have had uh, the full lineup at, at the Weems Baskin those that competed uh, showed that they're on the right track to do things for you in the postseason yeah I mean we're excited about our kids coming out, uh, along I mean uh uh, Sweatman coming along and vaulting uh, four meters and getting a PR there, and, and that was exciting. And to have, you know, just there's just a flow of it. Uh, to get uh, Aaliyah back on track, I mean, uh, two days, she, that's our first two day meet outdoors. I mean, when, sure. we're, when we're down at uh, Florida, she just ran one day, two races. You know, so she ran a sprint race with a four by three where we ran it really, really fast. Um, and nobody in the country runs it. So we can only compare it to ourselves. So we look back at people who made Olympic teams and world championships, and they didn't run as fast as that group of girls. So we moved that stick quite well, and I'm excited. It's the fastest that we've had. Um, and so I was pleased that Aaliyah getting 
sore one day and then coming back so her body has to adapt and it was tough the second day to sure. run a quarter but she ran and won and she come back and she won again so that's preparing her for this week florida relays is what's coming up this week it, it might be the first uh, outdoor meet of the season for you guys to compete against other nationally ranked programs at least a lot of them i know there's 14 of them this weekend seven on the men's side seven on the women's side a couple of folks making their outdoor season debuts. Uh, what do you hope to get out of this weekend in Florida? Who specifically, whether it's someone making their outdoor debut or, or someone going for the third week in a row, who are you really uh, looking for something out of this week? I mean, I think our girl quarter miles keep progressing, and that's our big uh, big thing. We want to try to get a mile relay and a score out of the, the four by four and, a, and the, out of somebody out of the quarter. So progressing that. And Caitlin Little uh, getting into a rhythm in the hurdles, progressing her, and um, that whole little hurdle group progressing, running a good shuttle hurdle relay down at Florida Relays to get them on a rhythm and get their open races in. So this is kind of a, a regional qualifier meet. You know, you, you're you going to see the people you're going to see in the region. And so uh, minus uh, the few SEC schools, but basically the other schools come down and those are a high number of those people will be regional people so it gives our kids a chance to race those people early and get some qualifying times tt i know is in the uh entry list for the men's 200 meter invitation will be his uh, outdoor debut i think uh if i'm not mistaken it'll be the first time he's been on the track since indoor nationals at texas a m uh his first opportunity to get a time on the list so uh, what do you want to see out of tt this weekend hey just just competitive just just get out and be a competitor you know uh his you know tt's coming off of some some viral um and still checking those things out so he's running for the first time um still not feeling really well uh, so but it's it's a season you, sure. you got to go when you're sick uh sometime and uh we're just gonna see what he's got in his tank we don't have a big expectation just get out and and run as good as you as well as you can uh, they call it the Florida Relays for a reason. Pretty much that entire second day, at least on the track, is all relays, and some of it is uh, some more non-traditional stuff. The sprint medley, the the shuttle hurdle relay. I'm pretty sure you got a four by two team that's going as well. Uh, in addition to the four by ones and the four by fours, running all those different relays in a day, even though they might not be events that transfer over to NCAA championships. Does that kind of help you guys with your timing and maybe also identify the best people for the four by one and the four by four? So when you get to postseason, you know who's got the stick. Yeah, those are things. Just just helping you. Uh, uh, lots of time, individual races, um, it's hard to develop the race. But when you're in relays, you can really go, people will go a total 100%. You know, they don't want to let each other down. And in turn, they develop speed doing that. So we use our relays, relay meets kind of as a, a part of our practice. You know, we don't do much today and tomorrow. Uh, such that we're going to overload this weekend in, in the meet, and that gives us a chance to get overloaded in quality workout. So uh, off of this meet here, a little rest, come back home, rest a little bit, and don't compete hard next week. You should see a big bounce when you get to Tennessee. So, you know, it's part of the process to to moving uh, what we do. The 4 by one we're going to be without Dendy this week, and that's something, you know, last week uh, – it was cold, struggled through that race, and we're looking forward to running fast. So we're going to make some substitute. That's what I talked about last week. We sure. got a lot of people. We ran two relays last week, so that gives us a chance to put parts together. I think our best relay will be our women's running a 4 by 2 this week, the mile relay the kids who ran on the 4 by 3 last week, uh, Aaliyah Abrams and Precious, and uh, uh, along with uh, Amicia Uh We'll add in someone else on there and, and probably run a pretty good one, and that's, that's what we're saying. And the shoulder hurdle, we got four girls that can run the hurdles. And our guys, probably best relay, we we look to try to run a good sprint medley. we got an 800-meter guy that can run, and we need to get him out and going. we got a good quarter mile. We've got TT that can run a great 200 meters, and then we can we can take Daryl, and it'll be his only race to run a two. And we're hoping we can get on down in there near the school record. There we go. Should be a big weekend. Gamecocks at the Florida Relays. Coach Fry, best of luck, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.
Hey, excited about it, man. Great weekend for the Gamecocks last week. A softball team did a great job in, in, in getting a win over a number two team. And so we had some good things happen. So I want to say hats off to the Gamecocks, hats off to the girls' basketball team. You know, they got to almost made it to the final eight, final four, which was a, a great effort for them. So hats off to Don Staley. And let's go Gamecocks. There you go. Thank you, Coach.